Jay Young is with us right now. He's a fourth-generation oil and gas professional. Uh, and uh, he's been following this industry for years as we keep an eye on what's happening as far as oil and gas prices are concerned. And, Jay, you think about it. I mean, we were told that, hey, once we uh, open up these reserves, we were going to see gas prices plummet. Hal had to get, he, he had predicted to go down to $1.85. We're yeah, not there stop yet. It. Stop uh, it. Jay, have we seen any difference in the market since we've opened up these oil reserves? No, 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 not not yet. That is that that's a longer term. It takes six months, a year, year and a half to even think about that helping our supply. I mean, right now we're seeing oil prices down, you know, over the last couple of weeks, um, which is great for the consumer. But you know, but but to really open up the reserves and say, okay, we're going to open them up, then it takes a long time, three to six months, to get a permit while they're getting everything ready. And it costs a lot of money, and money's not free-flowing for oil and gas investment right now. And so oil prices are being pushed higher because of that. So, I mean, uh, you know, Biden's doing a lot of things. He's trying to keep the prices uh, from going to 150 to 200 and gas prices going to 5 6 $7 a, a gallon. But uh, just the, the permits – is another little band-aid, if you will, on a gunshot wound, in my opinion. Isn't it too little too late, though? I mean, shouldn't he have been thinking about this a while back instead of what what he's having to deal with now? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when he got elected, he was like, we're going all electric cars. We're not going to go any gasoline. We're just going to shut them all down and park them, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how people are supposed to go back and forth to work, (laughs) you know, all of a sudden and spend $70,000, $100,000 on a Tesla car. Um, But, yeah, I mean, he's he's been talking about all of a sudden, you know, oil and gas companies don't go, don't go drill. We don't want that. We don't. We want. We want clean energy, and that's what he was talking and spouted off about. But then all of a sudden, it's like, you know, it. All that matters is demand, uh, supply and demand, right? Yeah. And our demand is coming back, and our demand will continue to come back, especially in the summertime. And when you when you don't have the supply, because he's been cutting back and cutting you know, regulations for oil and gas companies like ours to drill for oil and gas, and we don't have the supply, prices are going to go higher. Now, listen to what gonna... listen to what Joe Biden said over the weekend. Uh-huh. Now. Take a listen right. to this. this is... And we're going to completely, but before, we're going to start the process where every vehicle in the United States military, every vehicle is going to be climate friendly. Listen, he says every vehicle in the U.S. military will be climate friendly. Every vehicle. Uh, Tankers? Everything. (laughs) Every vehicle. Every vehicle. Yeah, I mean, ships at sea, every vehicle in the U.S. military, uh, airplanes, everything, fighter jets, they're going to all be climate friendly. I think he's probably talking about Jeeps. Well, that's not, uh, (laughs) he just said every vehicle. Every vehicle. Meanwhile, China says, you know what, we're going to hold off on this climate-friendly stuff for a while. (laughs) Did you see that? They're going to drill away. Yeah. They're they're hitting it heavy, and they're going to say, you know, that uh, that climate change thing, we're going to have to put that on the back burner. (laughs) It's crazy what's going on. Jay, hey, uh, Hal's asked this question before. Could Governor Abbott, could he supersede what's happening uh, on the federal level and just say, you know what, we're going to open up? Jay Young is with us. Yeah, and here in the state of Texas, if the governor, we asked that question, remember, right before the break, yeah. how, it, could the governor supersede what the feds are doing here in this state, Jay? Oh, yeah, Governor Abbott's done a great job. He's done everything he can to be drilling for oil and gas in the United States. But all he said, there's three reasons why, you know, the oil and gas prices are going up and we're not drilling for oil in the United States is because, you know, number one, the federal government, the state governments, which Governor Abbott's doing a great job. It's easy to get a permit in Texas. It's hard in Colorado, Wyoming, California, but it's easy here, which is great. But the the second reason why oil and gas prices have gone up is because, you know, public companies are not drilling. I mean, even Pioneer has said, hey, if oil goes to 200, we're not going to increase our our rig count. We're not going to continue to drill because of people on their boards are just saying we want you to send money to us. We don't. We don't. We don't want this. Like the third reason is because of all the private equity companies that invested years ago, back in the shell boom and lost money, and that's what they don't want to see happen anymore. They just public companies are like we have people on our board that want to go green, and I always I've coined the term greener, but they they. 
they just don't want to see oil and gas drilling. So public companies aren't. I mean, it's it's private companies like ours, you know, that are that are the ones that are out drilling for oil and gas right now in the United States. And, and I don't have the money Exxon does. I mean, they've got tons of money, Pioneer Natural Resources. All these companies right now are just not putting rigs back to work. I mean, Exxon makes $6 billion last quarter or two quarters ago, and they spent $10 billion buying back their stock. Instead of putting that money to work like they would have years ago, they're, they're, they're buying back stock. They're sending dividends out to clients. That's what they're doing. So it's not just – you know, the federal government or, or even at the state level, it is these public companies that are just not going back. You know, so and I wrote in my book, you know, the upside of oil and gas investing, which you can go on our website and, uh, you know, get more information. But how can you take advantage of this? How can you – is oil and gas investing right for you? How can the consumer be paying, you know, 50 60 now they're going to be paying $80, $90 to fill up their pump? How can they – benefit from this and because that's what's that's what's all going to boil down to i mean you can't control the price of oil and gas but you can you know invest in it find a small oil and gas company that that's on the public markets that you want to invest in that's what i would recommend right now you have to do something like that or you can do something like ours is you know we have uh private placements where you can get benefits tax benefits and monthly income but it's as long as the demand is strong, and if you look at the next three, five years of where the demand for oil and gas is going to be, it's going to remain high. It's going to remain high. You can't just throw all these vehicles, you know, in the street and just go, okay, we're going to go totally battery. You know, we are going there, but it's just going to take a lot of time. And so our demand will stay stronger for a long period of time. And that's that's why oil prices will will stay up. And as long as it's there, <clears throat> and our supply is not there, and we're not drilling for oil and gas like we were before the pandemic, prices are going to stay strong. Thank you very much, Jay.